we're going to be comparing this water-based speedball uh, block printing ink black with the super graphic black oil-based speedball ink that is water miscible. <laughs> Today I am testing out a new ink um, that I just got, Super Graphic Black by Bill Flick. It's a speedball ink and what it is, it is an oil based ink that is um, also water, uh, not water soluble, but basically you can, you can clean it up with soap and water. I'm not exactly how, I'm sure how uh, they do that. Um, I think it, if you see here, uh, they say it's water miscible, oil-based printmaking ink. So um, I'm hoping that this actually goes on a lot better than the Speedball uh, water-based ink, uh, which tends to dry really quick as, as you're working with it. This Speedball ink here is what I have been working with in the past. And um, I think we're able, we're gonna be able to do a, a quick comparison too, because I do have some uh, prints, uh, you know, some proofs of this print uh, pulled already with this ink. So um, we're gonna be comparing this water-based speedball uh, block printing ink black with the super graphic black oil-based speedball ink that is water miscible so um, you know that's one of the chief complaints of people who use oil based ink is the difficulty for cleanup um, and having to use harsh harsh chemicals if, if they're not opting to you know kind of go the natural route of, of using uh, like a uh, oil or um, you know dawn or, or you know other other uh, less less volatile chemicals to clean up. So um, let's see how this works, and uh, hopefully this this gives some insight on um, you know another supply that is available to you. Um, and and definitely comment if you use this and what you found to be the the best qualities, the most frustrating aspects of working with it. That way the community can benefit from your expertise, so uh, and your experience. So. Let's go ahead and get this started. I'm going to be rolling out on wax paper because uh, I don't feel like scrubbing or cleaning up anything. I'm just going to throw it away. Um, we'll do a quick pull of my uh, little alien dude uh, camping print and then uh, we'll take a look at it. Hopefully we'll get a good idea of how this, um, how the constitution of this one is. I'm just going to use a little cheap speedball brayer, um, nothing fancy, because mainly because I don't have anything fancy right now at the moment. Um, okay, I can definitely, <laughs> definitely notice the difference straight off the bat as um, some more oily residue uh, came out um, prior to the actual pigment, um, similar to how a uh, non-shook ketchup bottle will kind of spew out the the liquidy ketchup before it actually gets to the substance um, <laughs> so after you have that lovely reference in your head uh, let's go ahead and see how this rolls out uh, so far um, the smell is very different from what I'm used to as far as the water-based speedball um, it's definitely more fluid. So there's more of a slickness to the uh, ink itself. And um, it feels nicer. It, it definitely feels like it's not gonna dry up or gum up on me. Um, it's about as sticky as, as far as pulling that brayer up as, um, you know the the water based is and let's go ahead and 
roll some ink onto my plate here. Alright. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but there is a storm. It is storming outside right now, and if it sounds like the roof is just tearing off the building that I'm in. Um, I know that that's not the case. Actually, I'm not sure if that's the case or not. Uh, I've had some, some roof leaks here in this building. And, uh, you know, one of the joys of renting, you, you're at the mercy of what the landlord will fix or not fix. But, all right, anyways, here we go. So that rolled out quite nicely onto that plate. I am not priming this plate, so there, this is the very first pool of this ink. All right, and I've simply got my uh, tabletop, little portable tabletop press set up here in my studio today. And I'm not gonna worry too much of centering this on the paper because this is, after all, just a proof. Um, now, this is going to be a little different from the other print because I did use a Baron on the previous print with a water base. So I'm actually simultaneously testing out how um, this plate reacts with my miniature press here. All right. And so hopefully. We've got good even pressure, nice pull. Yeah, and so we've got a little bit of movement on the plate itself. Um, and that's pro probably due to the fact that um, this is the, the pressure was a little tight on this press. But overall, the coverage looks good. Um, it, it, I did lay it on a little bit thicker, so I do have some runs as you can see. Um, the lines aren't as crisp as I would like it and you know that is just the nature of this proof now what I want to do is go ahead and do another one I'm gonna back the actually I'm gonna I'm gonna change over to the Baron that way we can get an accurate comparison and then um, the print that I, the previous proof that I have is is also pulled with that baron so we'll, we'll get a little bit accurate read on how this performs okay so i'm just going to lightly re-ink this plate and hopefully uh with with the baron this time we'll get better pressure less uh, movement of the plate itself now this is on a speedy carve block um so those of you who have used them before you know that they have a lot of movement to, to them so when you run it through a press there's a lot of risk for actually moving you know that that plate moving on you if the pressure isn't right and even all the way through so uh, that being said that's just my opinion and experience on that I know that Plenty of people make wonderful, wonderful uh, prints with, with Speedy Carve and, and similar materials. So, uh, you know, if it works for you, it works for you, great. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to center this as best I can. All right, so that's down. I've got my Baron here. I'm not putting a ton of pressure here. I'm just letting it glide over because I know that it will move on me if I let it. Okay. So, again, not a ton of pressure on this print. And I kind of did the same thing with the previous previous pull. Now I'm just going to hold it down right here to see how that's pulling up. Yeah, those lines are crisper. All right. All right. So I'm actually pleased with that. I do enjoy texture in the ink um, on my prints personally. Um, not Maybe not quite so much on as this one has, but I do um, 
like that hand pulled feel to them. So I'm gonna back off the camera here a little bit, that way you can see that. All right, so this is our oil-based print. And then this is one of the ones that I was much more happy with from the water-based ink. Now, just looking at it here in this light, um, I can tell where I put adequate pressure um, and the appropriate pressure uh, here on the on the antenna, the this little satellite dish figure here. Um, I, I'm seeing that this black is a bit more um, well. It's it's deep, but there's some shimmer to it. There's some some um, almost like an iridescence to this ink here. Uh, whereas with the water base, once it's, it dries, it dries very matte. So I'm wondering if once this dries, it's going to be very matte. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my. Um, heat gun over here and see if I can quicken this drying process real quick and then take a take another look at this. Okay and I'm back. Now I do say it did change some as far as the the reflection. It's still just as deep. Um, And this may be the coverage on it, but where where there is thicker coverage, it is actually more, and I don't know if the camera is actually able to pick this up, um, but it's actually, it's, it's almost a deeper black, but there is a, it's almost as there's, it's, it's picking up a little bit more reflection. So it's not as matte as, a water-based black ink would be. Now that's not necessarily a problem. Um, in fact, you may want that, but if I maybe I can angle this in the light a little bit, and you can see the difference there. But your water base, your traditional water base, is not going to. It's going to dry matte, and what that means is it's going to have not a glo as glossy as the surface area on there and so it's not going to reflect as much light. The blacks are going to be very very dark as long as you have adequate coverage. Now you see here um, where there's some some lifting off of off of the uh, the print itself where the coverage is not as you know, thick and great as I would, um, you know, most would expect. I actually like that feel to my prints, though. It, it almost makes it feel like old film, you know? <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's something I do like. Now this is a little much for me, um, just because it's it's a little too far gone, and and I uh, that has more to do with I think the pressure because here I I did put a little bit more pressure on to the um, little satellite box here and and that came out great. The lines are crisp, the, I didn't have much movement at all. Um, and I have to say, I, I do like the performance of it. Um, after passing it over the heat gun, you know, under the heat gun, there's, um, there's a little bit of tackiness still to this and um, I would expect that it's gonna, you know, this is gonna definitely need a drying rack and um, you know, time to to dry. Now, let me see if there is any instructions on how long this would take to dry. I, I don't see any, and I'm sure that can be looked up on Speedball, Speedball's website. But um, you know, that's that's one of my preferences for working with water-based inks in particular, is that. With water-based inks, you're going to have a quicker dry time, um, and 
that's both a, a, a good thing and a bad thing, depending on what your preferences are, how fast you move, and uh, you know how efficient you are at, at working and pulling prints. Now I can already tell from the wax paper over here that um, it's still it's still workable. It's still wet. I mean, I can run it over, and the brayer is still picking up ink. It's still spreading very well. Um, actually, if I kind of scrape that edge across, you can see um, white under there, meaning that there's there's not any ink that has dried on that on that uh, paper. Um, honestly, the amount of time that I've spent here making this video since I rolled out that ink, um, I would have had. Uh, Mo the, most of the that bottom layer, like I wouldn't have been able to scrape that. Um, this ha th this does dry much faster, um, both on your print and on your palette. Because of that, you know, a lot of people prefer uh, working with oil-based inks. Not only that, oil-based inks tend to have a deeper, richer uh, color palette whereas the water-based inks won't have as much of a vibrance to the colors that they that that you can you can purchase and now that being said I love water-based inks I, I personally work with them the most um, I, I rarely uh, print with an oil base, although when I do, I thoroughly enjoy the fact that I don't have to speed through the process to make sure that things aren't drying on me. Um, you know, you can definitely mitigate that with a retarder or an extender of some sort, uh, you know, an additive to the ink and mix that in, but at that point, you might as well just be working with a an oil-based ink. Um, the dry time on the back end of things is not going to be uh, much different um, or make much of a difference uh, rather than if you were working with an oil-based versus water-based uh, once you have all those additives and, and everything else in there that you would want to make that ink last longer and be workable for a longer amount of time. So that being said, Honestly, water-based speedball ink has been absolutely fine to me. I know that there are those out there that uh, rave against it. Um, not just speedball, but water-based in general. Um, if it works for you, it works for you. That's, that's my whole mindset on art supplies and really any other tools. If it works for you and it, it helps you get the results that you're going for, great. You know, there's no problem with with using something that um, maybe the the majority of the vocal people out there don't employ. But if you're looking for something that has a lot more workability, work time than water base, you get frustrated with ink drying on your palette or um, ink drying on your uh, plates. And, and proofs or, or prints not coming up um, as clean because of that dryness factor, that dry time factor. Um, look into this oil-based. If you're if you're used to working with water-based and and you want to try it out, this is probably a good first step before you move on to like a, a jacquard or or. Um, you know that any any of the other more professional oil based truly oil based you, where you, you cannot clean it up with soap and water um, uh, inks so that's that's the print that's the review uh, hopefully you got something from this again if you have any thoughts on this matter if you have some more experience with these types of, of oil based inks that are that are a little I would consider this more of an in what well, it says professional yeah, um, you know, you can definitely be using this as a professional, but it, it, it feels as if it's a first step, an easy transition from a water-based to an oil-based um, if, you're, if you're moving from a water-based, if, if you're wanting to explore and try it out. Now, if you're already using oil-based inks and more um, 
strictly oil based, uh, you know, more in the traditional sense. This one, you know, moving to this one, it, it may or may not be um, something within your preference. So um, if you get a chance to get a little small sample tube like this uh, from somebody uh, from your local art store, it's probably worth the, the purchase just to try out and, and see how you like it. Um, uh, this is, is, pro is likely going to be a lot less expensive than your more high-end professional oil-based inks. Um, so, you know, I would encourage you, if, if you have the slightest interest in it, and especially if you're considering switching over from, from water-based to oil-based, this is a good, a good uh, a step in that direction. And um, then from there, you know, you can experiment more with their, the other lines as far as uh, Speedball, the, the professional series goes, or um, even other brands that are a little bit more higher end. Um, I, I do believe that you'll probably get richer colors from your oil based if that's something that you're looking for and you're, you've not been satisfied with the, with the colors that you, you get, the, the deepness and richness and vibrance uh, from water base. So definitely something worth trying out. So um, there you have it. Thanks for watching and uh, definitely comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. If you like this video, if you would like to see more videos like this, um, please let me know. And uh, you know, if 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 that's definitely uh, the the preference for our commu our little community here, um, I will try to get more videos like this. All right. Well, thanks very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, well here is a moment of truth to see how well this actually cleans up with just soap and water. Um, sorry about the lighting in here, I, I didn't, I couldn't really get my lighting in this room. Alright, so obviously off of this speedy card, it's coming off pretty well. There is some adherence, some staining that's going on, but you know, soap and water, I mean this water alone seems to be doing fine pulling this off. I'm, I'm very lightly rubbing. I, I know that um, these speedy car blocks have a tendency to tear out if, you, if you're too rough with them. So, try not to do that. Take up a little bit. Let's see if that has any effect of getting some of the residual ink off of those lower spots, the deeper spots that are in here. And this is just Dawn, uh, or not Dawn, Dove bar soap. This is what I use to clean my brushes. It's the only one that I use to clean my brushes uh, when I'm painting. Alright, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's moderately cleaner. Um, seems to be coming off pretty well. I actually got out of... So there's some, some grooves here on the uh, smaller grooves on his waistline, and it's coming up pretty good. So, definitely holds up as far as being able to... Definitely holds up as far as being able to pull off with just soap. And water. Um, so there you go. All right, and we'll head, we'll head back to the other room here.